is it better to climb in or out the saddle? Now, to a certain extent, it depends on the climb that you're riding. Short, steep climbs are generally better tackled out the saddle. What about long climbs? What is the most efficient way of riding up them? Now, here's a GCN Does Science video to tackle that exact question. Well, maybe not exactly. We are going to do it only once and only using Dan, so it's hardly a scientific test. But it will give us a broad idea and it will be interesting. So we've come to the University of Bath in the UK, one of the top places in the country for sports science. And Dan behind me is currently two minutes in to a 10 minute test. He's riding on this treadmill at a simulated 6% gradient at 18 kilometers an hour. That's why he's looking a little bit uncomfortable. He's only allowed to do this 10 minutes in the saddle. And at the end of it, we'll take his heart rate for the previous minute and then we'll also check his blood lactate levels and his expired gases. And these things will give us a really pretty accurate idea of the level of effort that Dan has needed to sustain this bit of riding. We come back to our trusty treadmill because it's a great way of doing tests where you remove all variables. Yeah, it's not exactly like riding on a road. There is no wind resistance and there's no variation, but that's precisely why this will give us an accurate indication of the only thing that we're testing. Okay mate, last minute, time to start recording some stuff. Heart rate's 169. Okay, and stop. How's that mate? Uh, yeah, I actually find it quite hard staying in the saddle for that amount of time. And as you said, my tendency really is to get out of the saddle quite a lot as soon as there's an incline. So I'm gonna be really interested actually to see how it feels when I am at the saddle most of the time on the on the next effort, but first of all, I'm gonna have a bit of rest, make sure I'm resting. Okay, round two. After a pretty significant period of recovery, Dan is now gonna do another 10 minutes, but half of it is gonna be out the saddle. And to try and make it a little bit more realistic, we're gonna split that into 30 second segments. So we'll do 30 seconds seated and 30 seconds out of the saddle and then repeat. Now at the end of it, we'll do all the same tests again and try and compare his effort levels over the two. Which one will be more efficient or will they both be the same? Dan, I know you like riding out of the saddle generally. Have you got any idea how this is gonna go? Um, I'm just over two minutes in now and I do really like the respite of just clicking down a couple of gears and getting out the saddle and I sort of like the change in some ways and it just, you know, it does feel, feel easier and as I said on the last one, I really wanted to get on the saddle. I'm looking forward to it now, two seconds to the next one. You know, slightly lower cadence. I sort of feel efficient basically like this. Right then, that's where Dan's money is. To be fair actually, Dan's preference for climbing out the saddle is similar to a lot of top pros. Out and out climbers like Contador, Valverde, and of course, Daniel Lloyd, all tend to ride out the saddle. And then there are other guys like Bradley Wiggins and now Chris Froome as well, who tend to ride most of the time in the saddle on climbs. So clearly there must be an element of personal preference in it. So whilst Dan's mid-test at the moment, perhaps you can just talk us through what a blood lactate level means and also what his expired gases mean. What are they? So the lactate that we measure is looking at um, the concentration of lactate in the blood. And lactate's a, a waste product of exercise and it's quite a useful marker to look at um, anaerobic and aerobic contributions to the exercise. So the harder Dan tries, the higher his lactate in his blood will be? Yes. Okay, and what, just as a marker, what would your steady state, what would your, you know, your resting blood lactate be, do you think? Around about one, Okay. or just under one. Um, in terms of peak scores, I have seen scores up in 17, 18. Ouch. But they've been, you know, sprint athletes, 50 meter swimmers, sprint cyclists, that sort of athlete, yeah. after a, a flat out maximal effort. Yeah. And what about these, uh, these expired gases then, the mask that Dan's wearing? So, 
What people often hear is the VO2 max figure. So VO2 max is maximal oxygen consumption, the maximum amount of oxygen that the body can take up and use within a minute. Um, what we're measuring is oxygen consumption because um, we use oxygen all the time, whether we're just sitting down reading the paper or walking or riding sub-maximally on the treadmill there. So we look at how much oxygen Dan was using to ride at that prescribed workload that we'd given him. Ready and stop. Having said I prefer getting out the saddle, after 30 seconds in the saddle, I felt like I was ready to get out of it. But then after 30 seconds out of the saddle, I also felt ready to sit back down. And I'm wondering whether it's maybe just the change of position that I like as much as one way or the other. Jonathan, talk us through it. Have we seen anything from this little experiment? So if we look at the data, the heart rate during the standing and seated climb varied depending on whether Dan was in the seat or in the saddle or not. Yeah. That went up and down, whereas it was more steady during the um, continuously seated trial. The average though was, was pretty much the same, wasn't it? Yeah. The VO2 figures, it's very fractionally higher when he was standing up, but really fractionally. Um, so there's probably nothing we can read into that. Yeah. And the lactate readings, slightly the other way around in that it was slightly lower when he was um, riding in and out of the saddle again. Yeah. So essentially at this sub-maximal state for Dan, so, so riding at a relatively comfortable but brisk pace up a climb, he was as efficient riding in and out of the saddle as he was in the saddle. Yeah. Good stuff. Let's see what Dan thinks about that. What do you make of that then, mate? The results say that actually there was no real difference between both runs. Yeah, and I guess like after having said in the first run that I was really looking forward to getting out of the saddle the second time up, actually once it came to that 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off, as it's on the treadmill, I was kind of looking forward to sitting back down. But I do certainly find, it has been something throughout my career, that I do like to get out of the saddle. I think it's more of a comfort thing. Again, this was a very steady state effort. Certainly for 99% of the riders I know, they can get their maximum sprint power only if they get out of the saddle. Same for short power climbs. I mean, I think it's only probably Hayden Ralston, a current pro with Trek Factory Racing, I know gets the most power out still sat in the saddle, but he's an exception to the rule. But on steady state climbs, if you can train yourself to be able to stay in your saddle the whole time, that probably is better. Now, I think it's worth saying as well though, that because we proved not conclusively, but there was no significant difference between purely riding seated and in and out of the saddle at a sub-maximal level. When you translate that onto the road and you have to change your pace, it probably we can conclude that you need to be able to ride in and out of the saddle in order to be a complete and efficient cyclist. So I wonder whether the conclusion I'm going to take from this is actually we need to train to be able to ride out of the saddle. Yeah, I certainly think in a non-controlled environment, which is exactly what road cycling is, that that is the case. You need to be able to ride in all sorts of scenarios, some of which necessitate sitting down, some of which need to stand up for. Do you want to tell Bradley Wiggins or shall I? I'll send him a text. All right. For more GCN Does Science videos, click on me. And yes, Luke, I am your father.